that are available across the Green Line, if you will, in the West Bank, which is under a different set of legal rules than within Israel's borders. And Olivier is right that if this attack uh, was committed uh, by someone who has Israeli citizenship, again, for the third time in a week, yeah. then certainly there are going to be questions asked about what kind of legal tools the authorities have at the moment, what kinds of legal tools they mean, they need, and what that means for, the, for the rights of our citizens. Okay, okay hold on, hold on. Okay, is that confirmed by the... Yes, yeah, confirmed by the Magen David Adam. Okay, so five, five killed. We have on the thing four killed, one critically hurt, but we are now getting confirmation. I just got no picture outside from of, the attack itself. From the attack itself. Okay, well, we'll leave that for, okay. for the but I just want to comment on what you're both saying, because yeah. we did see last year after the incidents in May, and I'm not talking about the operation in Gaza, I'm talking the civil unrest that we saw in uh, Israeli Arab communities, including in this community in Jaffa, there was discussion about whether to allow the Israeli military to operate in Israeli Arab communities to seize weapons what you're talking about, oh, when the 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 the, the uh, abundance of weapons found Israeli Arab communities, we should note Israeli Arab local leaders, politicians, and community leaders objected to that. They felt that was one step too far. While using the Shin Bet, a security service which operates primarily with Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, stepping up their role in the uh, Israeli Arab communities, that was very controversial. But unfortunately. This could be the, the siege. This could lead to calls to take those contributions. Right. I mean, just, just, to, just to complete the picture, local authorities and Arab communities want the weapons to be taken away. Again, these weapons, as we all know, have been primarily used not against Jews, but against Arabs going back years because of the lack of investment and security and also the complications, even the police acting in these communities. There is that element as well. But for a number of different reasons and interlocking reasons, the problem was not addressed. It continued to metastasize and get worse, leaving, by all accounts, hundreds of thousands of illegal weapons, primarily in Arab communities. Uh, and it certainly stands to reason that that could spill over into nationalistic violence. Again, we saw it last May. We may uh, be seeing it this week as well. And again, as coming back to what we were saying a moment ago, raises the questions of what kind of tools the authorities should have, what that means in terms of the effectiveness of the fight, and what that means about of, in terms of the civil liberties and civil rights of, of Israeli nationals. Right. I want to let's go to the video. There is a gentleman we saw just now on a motorcycle. This is what we've been hearing. There was one individual on a motorcycle there <laughs> carrying out shooting while he's uh, while he's on the motorcycle shooting at passersby. We now have confirmed five killed in the uh, central Israeli city of Bnei Brak. The uh, assailant on the motorcycle is believed to have been killed. We know that the police say they have killed, neutralized yeah. a terrorist, but reports now of another suspect in the hands of, of, of police, of a second suspect, but we don't know if he's, in, if, if he's involved in this. In custody. In custody, in the hands of the police, in custody. We if don't. it's someone who is directly involved in the attack and in custody, of course, that's something new. Uh, From the last week, all the, other, all the other assailants have been killed as right. part of the that's defense so, and the so attack. So far as, as of this evening, that's the case. We, right. the, the, the suspected terrorist that we see on that motorcycle yeah. in that video was neutralized by police. I would like to say that we have to talk about the public perception of all these events in the last days. There is a kind of uh, uh, loss of uh, trust among the Israeli population in the authorities, in the police, even in the Shin Bay. They don't understand what's going on. The reactions look not tough enough from their side against this wave of terror. And it's very important for the government right now, if I may, to, 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 to take this issue that the people are afraid or people are very, very worried and are losing their, 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 their trust in the, in, the, in the security forces because it's a key issue. We cannot, we cannot uh, disconnect the security forces from the people when the state of Israel is facing such an horrific period. All right, I just, again, we're walking at that scene in B'nai Brock. Certainly you could see a very serious, a number of paramedics on the scene there. Unfortunately, we know of uh, five killed yeah. at this point. In the ultra-Orthodox city of B'nai Brock, I don't know, that, I'm not sure I remember the last time there was a terror attack in B'nai Brock. Maybe you have to go back to the I don't know. Of I course, know. the ultra-Orthodox community has suffered greatly from attacks in recent years, particularly in Jerusalem, right. where they've been targeted, specifically targeted because of their being so visibly Jewish uh, in and around the old city. Uh, in terms of B'nai Brock, I believe there had been attacks there as in so many parts of I Israel meant, over the course of the second oh, intifada.
in of recent years. Of course, the second and the father, but not in recent years. But as you said, because the individuals in that community are uh, uh, Hasidic or ultra orthodox individuals and dress as such, uh, it's possibility of them being the targets attacks. Let's go back to uh, our defense correspondent, Jonathan Regev. Again, Jonathan, just an update. Start with an update on the facts that we have confirmed about this terror attack uh, this evening. <laughs> So, so, five dead so far. Probably, probably not no confirmed. Studio. Probably one of them is the attacker. We so have by now seen videos of an attacker in the city of Nebrak a, a walking around, running around by foot and shooting with what seems to be an automatic rifle, perhaps an M16, shooting randomly at uh, people uh, on, on the street. This, of course, raises uh, the, the possibility that uh, this is a, a, a nationalistic motivated uh, incident uh, is someone looking for the random Jewish people on the street to, to, to shoot at. Uh, this is probably uh, the case. Five people, as we said, are dead. Probably one of them is uh, the, the attacker. That is not confirmed uh, at uh, the, the moment. Uh, these are the, the facts that we're hearing so far from uh, Magen David Adom, the, the emergency service, uh, the, uh, the Israeli emergency service, and uh, the, the Israeli uh, police. We also heard uh, uh, pos uh, reports of a, a possible and another possible event nearby at a shopping mall, but police is now saying this has not happened. Uh, so th this is what, what we know. What we know so far: one attacker. We saw him uh, uh, in, in a few videos walking around, running around the city of Nebrak, shooting randomly at people uh, on uh, the, the streets. Uh, unconfirmed yet if he was acting by himself, if there were other people uh, were waiting for more uh, um, reports from police regarding that. Right, and uh, still an uncertain situation. Jonathan Regev, thanks, thank you, thank you for that update. Uh, but uh, it is starting to emerge the picture of what happened yeah. in B'nai Brock. Uh, certainly, at least this one individual on this motorcycle shooting at people randomly, which certainly pegs it most likely as a as a as a terror attack and actualist yeah. attack. Uh, and of course, uh, given the timing, so many factors here following on those two attacks, uh, and also, of course, uh, concerns already going into. The Ramadan season. We saw Defense Minister Benny Gantz go to Jordan today to uh, speak with King Abdullah about uh, security arrangements on the Temple Mount or Haram al Sharif going. But clearly, this is taking uh, this is a whole new side of what we anticipated, perhaps, or in what we that would be happening. Uh, we were worried about uh, East Jerusalem, the West Bank. Now we're talking about the heart of Israel. Yeah, I mean, we may still be worried about East Jerusalem and the West Bank. Of course. Even even as we talk about the heart of Israel, obviously it is Hamas that last May was so keen on connecting all of these different parts of our troubled land together in one effort. And of course, the fear will be that that could succeed again. Although, again, in the West Bank, the and even in, to a large degree in East Jerusalem, the authorities have tools that are not available to them when dealing with attackers who are Israeli citizens, who have a set of rights and who live under a different legal regime uh, that, again, it means that the authorities have more limitations. And going back to the point Olivia, I think, sadly, rightly raised, to what extent do there need to be changes made to that? But it has to be done so carefully. It has to be done so carefully because, again, these are Israeli citizens who have rights. The, a, an overreach in that direction could have a boomerang effect. I give going and it's very, very tricky. A six, a six uh, person is very badly wounded. I want to be clear because... I, I, I mean, it's not even clear to me the five includes the terror attacker. Are we talking about four? I think it's five. It does Israeli. not. So it's five Israelis. No, 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 in one. general in Israel, the terror attacker is not counted as part of the case. Right. I, I, right. So it's five civilians killed in B'nai Brak, five confirmed, uh, and the attacker also neutralized, and reports of other injuries. We know that there were multiple locations involved here. Olivier, we know this was an individual on a motorcycle driving around. I would be a, a little bit prudent because maybe it's two people. We, we, we don't, don't know yet. Neutralize. We don't know yet. But this possibility has to be checked again. All right, Olivier uh, Rafowitz, Owen oh, Alterman, thanks for being with us. But we're going to continue. We're going to go out for a break. But, of course, I-24 News at the top of the hour is continuing this breaking coverage terror attack yeah. in the city of B'nai Brock. Five uh, uh, killed. Uh, the attacker neutralized questions about whether there might be another individual involved. The shooter was in Hebrew, not in Arabic. Okay, so uh, the, we'll, we're going out for that break. Stay with I-24 News for more on this developing story. You're just always 
putting work first. Look, I don't want to fight with you. Really? He might. We've been compromised. Seriously, this is your plan? How about a thank you? Thank you. For news. Imagine being able to see into the future. What innovations will change the world as we know it? Join us as we meet the people changing our planet and discover the inventions shaping tomorrow. Israel Business Beat, Sundays and Wednesdays, 9 30 p.m. GMT.